Hey y'all, in for h and h here, and yes, that's 12 meters. I just worked this station in Ireland. I want to encourage you to get on this band and try it every now and then. I didn't even see a spot or anything. I just, it's one of my routines to go through and check the, the higher bands, and I tuned around, and there he was. Now, there he is. He's in... In, um, he's in Ireland, that is Gary, uh, EI3GIB, Echo India 3, Golf India Bravo, and he's running a Kenwood TS990S, I think he said he was running 400 watts into a GXP Yagi, multiband Yagi, uh, they're from Poland, they're very good antennas from what I hear. So I wanted you to know, I mean, I worked in with 200 watts. When you get up on these higher frequencies like this, you don't need a lot of power. This radio puts out 200, so I dialed up 200. And I worked in with my 160 meter doublet. Now I actually checked and he was e equally strong on the ZS6BKW, so I kind of worked him with either antenna. But let me show you a little something interesting here. I want to move the camera over to where you can see the, the ham clock. So I, I spotted him, and after I did, he showed up in the list over here uh, in, the, in the DX cluster. Now, it may be, he may not be in there anymore. Let me look. Yep, there he is right there. So I'm going to click on there, and look at this. The VOA cap thinks that at a 100-watt sideband, I shouldn't be able to work anybody on 12 meters. See, 10 and 12 are black. Red, you know, 15 meters, if he were if he were on the 15 meter band, it's saying I have less than a 33% chance of working him. And, uh, oh yeah, there's an update available for ham clock. See, the version is in red there. I don't know if you can see my mouse moving right there. All right, but anyway, what I want to encourage you about is just because you see black or red, doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Don't just give up. I especially have found this to be true twice with 12 meters where uh, I, I even worked a D-Expedition last November on 12 meters when it was in the black and I got them. Now they weren't very strong just like Gary there wasn't super strong. Now I was running amp one. If I had used amp two I actually got him. He was at five over nine using amp two but in other words I was having to do a lot of boost on the receiving and that's not his fault it's just propagation but what i'm what i want to say is don't just assume that you don't have a shot at it even you know when you look at this especially on these upper frequencies now if i were to say well what if i were running 500 watts i'm switching this over here look it's still saying no 12 meters probably not going to happen well what about if i was doing cw which is usually easier even CW 12 meters, it's not giving me a lot of chances. So uh, I just, it, again, I actually found him by tuning around. People ask me a lot of times, by the way, with that 5,000, you don't really have a scope. How do you know where to go? Well, actually, it does have a scope. Let me get back over to the radio and show you. But, you know, I mean, I have the FTDX 10 sitting right here. And it, of course, has, you know, the... A really tremendous uh, scope, the 3D version and all that, waterfall. But this does have right here a spectrum scope. And, you know, that's enough. If I see a blip there, I know somebody's there. But I wasn't even watching that. Look, I'm old school. I started doing this on amateur radio in 1982, but even before that, CB radio. And I began working on radios at age 14 at a CB radio shop. So I've been around this a long time. So I'm from the era where you tune around and you see what's going on. Now, you're going to gain experience the more you do this, and you're going to begin to realize, well, this time in the sunspot cycle, this time of the day, this time of the year, where might I find signals? You'll get to that point. You really will. You know, if you're new to this, let me, let me just say, a lot of this is just going to, you're going to pick it up from the more time you spend on the air. But, again, I don't just assume that there is or isn't any activity on a band. I just get in there and turn around and listen. Now, you know, he's not, that's not bad. Let me switch over to the ZS6BKW and see if it's changed any.
That's the ZS6BKW. You know, see, he's about equal on the two antennas, and both of those antennas are in the doublet family. Well, the one I'm on now is the is a doublet. Uh, it's cut for 160 meters. You know, just a, a dipole fed with ladder line. Cut for 160 meters. Of course, the antenna matching unit over there in my uh, Elecraft KPA 1500 matches it for the you know for the radio. So the radio sees 50 ohms impedance. The ZS6BKW is actually resonant on this band. So let me let me move up there and show you the the right side of the screen there. I'm gonna zoom in. So there's the software that I control my amplifier with. And you'll see, and it of course reads out power and SWR right there, but there's where I switch antennas. So there's the doublet, it's antenna two. He's not talking right now, but the antenna one, that's the ZS6BKW. And that's actually going through an antenna switch over here on the left. I've shown you in many other videos, so I'm not going to pan over there. But right now, what I have dialed up on that antenna switch is a ZS6BKW. I have an off-center fed dipole, which is a Fritzel FD4 available over there. And then I have the Cushcraft R5 vertical. I tried the vertical and, you know, naturally... A vertical brings in natural noise so you get more noise floor with a vertical and he wasn't stronger on the vertical so when you when you see that scenario you go wow that's cool I'll go back to the wire <laughs> and the funny thing is the wire antennas are much less expensive than that than that vertical okay there he is that's antenna one so that right now is that ZS6 BKW there's the off-center fed dipole ZS6 BKW, there's the vertical. Hear all the QR Nancy coming in. Back to the ZS6 BKW. All center fed dipole. ZS6 BKW. And double. And so you can see there with the doublet, the ATUN, that means antenna tuner, is engaged. But when I switch over to the antenna one, you'll see that it turns off the antenna tuner over there in the amp. So because the ZS6BKW doesn't need the antenna tuner for 12, 17, 20, and 40, and for that matter, the upper portion of 10 meters, the FM area there, it doesn't need an antenna tuner there either. So the, uh, the, the amplifiers over there, it, it just knows by what band I go to. If you've seen my videos about ultimate automation, it remembers your favorite antenna for a particular band and returns there. Really what it does is it returns to the last antenna you used on that band, which is smart because it might be the band condition change. And the last time you worked that band, a different antenna worked better. So it just remembers the last antenna you used and reverts to it when you change to that band. But it also remembers whether I need the antenna tuner on that antenna or not. So you'll see when I switch back over to the doublet, watch this square right here. And the ATU is back <clears throat> enabled, ATU in, in circuit. So, all right, just uh, covered a lot in that video. You know, I just worked the guy and I thought, man, I, you know, I should, I should, this is a good scenario to go through. Trying different antennas, able to work him with 200 watts. He gave me a 5.8. Uh, like I said, he was, when I ran amp two, which, yeah, I mentioned that earlier. Let me clarify what I mean by that. So, you know, here, amp one, amp two is going to bring in more noise because you're amplifying. But the reason I might switch to amp two is to give him a more accurate signal reading. See, watch. See, the S meter is calibrated with amp one at 14.2 megahertz. And the further up you go in frequency, you know, the less accurate it's going to be. But let's face it, S meters aren't totally accurate anyway. So I went to amp two to give him an idea of what his signal port was. And he was hitting five over nine. So now he's not. But the band conditions are changing. But I gave him the five nine. But normally I would run that on amp one. In fact, normally I would run it on IPO if he was strong enough that I really didn't need that extra amplification. So that was the deal on that, why I mentioned that, you know, I was just using amp two temporarily so I could get a, get it closer to perhaps what his signal report really was. 
So uh, now there was a little bit of white noise in his signal, so I could have probably got away with saying F, a, a five seven is a compromise. But I'm going to err on the side of giving him a little bit higher signal than because you know I, I am going by ear. And those of you who have watched my channel for a while, you've probably run across a few of the videos where I in the video description, I lot of, put a lot of extra information in the video descriptions. I have my little table in there for how I calculate an S meter reading by ear, because quite honestly, I feel like my ear is better than the meters are. You know, they calibrate the meter at amp one at one particular frequency, and that is usually 20 meters. And then it's gonna vary up and down according to what band you go to. It's never gonna be exact. And it's not even, even on 14.2 megahertz, and when they calibrate it for S9, it may, it, it's going to read a little off on the low end of the scale and a little bit off on the high end of the scale. You just got to get to know your radio. You know, like this one, anything above S9, it's reading one decibel low. <laughs> okay, that's not a big deal. But down on the lower end of the scale, it's, uh, it's two or three decibels of variance there, you know, within an S unit, of course. All right, well, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Hope I taught you a tip or two there, or at least maybe you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching videos on my channel. And if you would, do me a favor, hang around for another half a minute or so. I want to acknowledge five of the Patreon team members, the long haulers. Those are the people who are responsible for me being able to continue to bring you these videos without having a corporate sponsorship, which, of course, would lead to censorship. And I like to give you the raw truth, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And these five people I'm about to acknowledge help make that possible. So please honor them by hanging around for another half a minute and uh, note the people who are helping make these videos possible. All right, hey, again, thanks for watching videos on my channel and 73 from N4HNH.